creepy and cool TikToks that will blow your mind. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! Disclaimer. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Please do your own research, as these clips haven't been fact-checked. What you're looking at is potentially the most expensive home in the world, located just off the Black Sea and surrounded by some of the most intense security forces in the world, or otherwise known as Vladimir Putin's secret palace. This compound located in southern Russia is more formally known as residence at Cape Idokopas and sits on a staggering 168 acres of land completely hidden from the public. In 2022, the estate was valued at 956 million US dollars, but recent valuations in 2024 are estimating the estate to be closer to 1.4 billion US dollars. While the main palace is certainly impressive, what surrounds the property and even what lies underneath the palace is what makes this property truly one of a kind. Driving into the complex from the highway, you'll first get stopped at this security checkpoint, ensuring that you have access to the property. From there, you'll travel up a windy road until you get to the top of a ridge before coming across the main security checkpoint. Here, there will likely be armed guards who will have had time to see who is approaching because of how windy the roads are. Near this main security checkpoint are several dormitories, which are intended to house the many staff and security guards, likely in the hundreds. There also is a communication center with a large telephone pole sticking out into the sky. If you're granted access to this compound and continue heading down the hill, you'll pass by two helicopter landing pads, as well as a grass field that's converted into a skating rink in the winter. Other buildings along this road include an outdoor amphitheater, a greenhouse, a church, and many other security facilities. At the end of the ridge, though, is the main palace that Putin and most of his trusted oligarchs will stay in. This palace has just about every room you could ever think of, including a large indoor swimming pool, a massive theater, a hookah lounge, hookah lounge. a cinema, a casino, wine cellars, a reading room, and just about anything Putin could ever want. Diagrams show that this palace has 11 massive bedrooms above ground, but what lies below the palace is potentially even more impressive. There's a massive secret bunker system below that stretches over 100 feet underground. The size of the underground bunker is arguably just as big as what we see above ground. The walls of the elevator leading down to the bunker are made out of concrete measuring 38 centimeters thick. These walls were likely designed to be able to withstand a nuclear attack. Inside the bunker are many ventilation shafts in the case of a chemical attack that could put poison in his secret palace. But a guy making a video using Google broke the secret. Okay. And if that's the case, there's an easy access for everyone Navy. Oh, by the way, I want to thank you all for your prayers and kind words during my surgery and recovery. They work, folks. Everything went well. Praise Jesus. People have been arrested in the death of Matthew Perry. Two doctors, two alleged dealers, and Perry's live-in assistant have all been charged in connection to the Friend star's death. The suspects are alleged to be part of a broad underground criminal network that supplied the actor with the substances that killed him. Prosecutors say the group preyed on the actor's addiction issues and referred to him as a moron in cruel texts discussing how to further exploit him. An indictment alleges they made tens of thousands of dollars selling to Perry, charging him $2,000 wow. for a vial that cost $12 in one instance. They're each facing a minimum of 10 I years knew there was time. foul play in fourth, but this is heartbreaking. And his living assistant, someone that was meant to help him, that is sad. Wow. Wow. So happy for this man. Very suspicious of the pharmaceutical business, but this man's life has been changed.
I don't know if y'all heard the news lately, but many people have stated that these birds we see in our sky are not real. So of course, I had to do my research and see what the people was talking about. Now listen to me closely. The people state that these birds are surveillance drones and that they are watching us. Now most of your electronics will have to take a battery to stay charged up. Well, it's rumors out there that these birds will charge up on the power lines. <laughs> you probably would have thought this would have made the news by now. Many people are protesting and talking about these little birds. And they would make these birds even smaller. And they would land on your windowsill. And they would eavesdrop into your house and listen to everything that you are saying. So of course, we still have some real birds up there in our sky but you also have to fake as well. I researched this topic on Google, and this is what Google told me. The CIA will use these pigeons to take images of areas. These pigeons is equipped with cameras and could take pictures. These are the eyes in the sky, the watchers, and they are watching you. This isn't a conspiracy anymore. They telling us what's going on. They will pay attention to what we watch and listen to to keep us far away from reality. You have to think, who is in charge of this program? Who is benefiting off of this? We have to wake up from the deception. I hope y'all like the lecture. Love and holiness. They don't need birds. Your phone sees and hears everything. This here is the strongest, most powerful lymphatic plant you can use from my experience. This here can help you dissolve lumps, bumps, cysts, boils, Swollen lymph nodes, goiters, nodules, anything that is lump and bump and can be dissolved externally, this plant will do it for you, okay? This plant is called pork roots. And I like to infuse pork roots yeah. into castor oil because castor oil is very, very um, deep penetrating and it carries the phytonutrients of the pork root, which helps you dissolve the lump and bump rather quickly. So when you infuse it, it will look like this. And you apply this on the lump and bump. Put enough of it, put it into a cotton swab, cover it up overnight, Allow it to do its job. Keep on doing daily and watch how the lump and bump dissolve. Pork and castor oil is something you should have at home for you and your family because it works and it I works really well. I think castor oil can do the same thing. What do you think? This has got to be the dirtiest place I've ever been to in my life. I'm currently in Mumbai, India. Let me show you guys this. Have a look at this. It's all full of rubbish. This used to be a river. I literally just come out to get some money from the ATM. Let me show you around these streets because they are absolutely crazy. This place actually might be too much. Like the busyness is alright, but it's plus the heat, plus everyone trying to sell you stuff. Like, it's hectic, like, hectic. There's no other place in Asia that's like this. Like, it's mental here. Let's have a look at the streets. It is what are you mental, doing over like, there, man? How crazy this place is. People, there's literally people everywhere. People honking their horns. Oh dear, oh. this place is mental. All the street food here. Bro, I've gone the wrong way here. Don't forget, they went to the moon. I'm about to spend 24 hours driving through America's poorest region, McDowell County, West Virginia. It's a place where the collapse of the coal industry left behind ghost towns and broken dreams. There's no money to be made here no more. Ooh. Where crystal meth and fentanyl addictions run wild and where people are living so isolated they have their own dialect. Well, to me, it's a boomer. <laughs> what is life really like in Appalachia's most redneck towns and how will I be received in this tight-knit community? It's time to meet face-to-face -face with locals and find out how poverty shapes their everyday reality welcome to the for to be honest i like the scenery anyone uh from that town please drop a comment when entering a black house don't use their white towels or any display towel hanging up order display soaps this is your side to go plate only ants can take trays home. All the coats go into the bedroom on top of the bed. Don't knock on their front door. Knock on that side door. Do not park in that driveway. Do not open that fridge. Water is acceptable. 
when looking at family photos on the wall, don't be dumb and be like, is that the girl in the backyard? Knowing her son in a whole new relationship. They just keep the picture up because of the babies in it. If the daughter went to college, she's going to have a bunch of fraternity stuff in her room. Especially pillows. It's the holiday black Santa Claus and maybe a black <laughs> Jesus painting somewhere. <laughs> they may have this TV stand still, but definitely got the 80s TV in the basement. All the old technology goes to the basement. And the day after Thanksgiving, the Christmas tree is put up. I like it. Right away. Oh. I know the feeling bro i just lost my cat today too his name is roberto i was in surgery for three days i guess he was looking for me when i came home i instantly noticed that he was sick i made a doctor's appointment for the next day but i couldn't find him for that day he was found dead in my neighbor's yard a few days later we just buried him today rest in peace roberto i'm so sorry i'm sorry From these unions came the Nephilim, described as giants and heroes of great renown. Who were the Nephilim? And what were the fallen angels? Were they really angels? If not, what were they? Now let's deep dive into this subject and find out more about it. In the ancient world, tales of giants have always fascinated and mystified humanity. Among these legends, the story of the Nephilim stands out. Mighty beings born from the union of divine watchers and human women. Today, we explore the origins, rise, and legacy of the Nephilim, as told in the apocryphal Book of Enoch and other ancient texts. The Book of Enoch, an ancient Jewish text, introduces us to the Nephilim. According to this text, a group of celestial beings known as the Watchers descended to Earth on Mount Hermon. Captivated by the beauty of human women, these watchers took them as wives, defying divine orders. From these unions came the Nephilim, described as giants and heroes of great renown. These offspring were not ordinary humans, but beings of immense size and strength, standing out in the early history of mankind. One of the rising questions we get is, how did this woman give birth to these giants? I think to answer the question is not that complicated. They could be just normal sized babies that grew to be giants, uh, just like a tree. First, it's like a little plant, then it turns into a humongous tree. The presence of the Nephilim on Earth brought both marvel and terror. They possessed extraordinary abilities and knowledge passed down from their celestial fathers. However, their dominance led to widespread corruption and violence as they used their power to subjugate and control humanity. The Watchers, along with the Nephilim, taught humans forbidden knowledge, metalworking, weaponry, enchantments, and other arcane arts. This influx of knowledge, while advancing human civilization, also brought chaos and moral decay as humanity grappled with the newfound power. Seeing the corruption and suffering caused by the Nephilim and their celestial fathers, God decreed a severe judgment. The Archangels were commanded to imprison the Watchers, and the Great Flood was sent to cleanse the Earth of the Nephilim's influence. The Great Flood, a cataclysmic event, was meant to erase the Nephilim from the face of the Earth. 
Yet, the legacy of these giants persisted in the stories and myths of various cultures around the world. From the Greek Titans to the Norse Jotun, echoes of the Nephilim story can be found across different civilizations. I think some of them survived during the floods, and fallen angels are also known as evil spirits, unclean spirits or demons. Uh, in uh, 2 Peter describes God's judgment upon the fallen angels or demons who join. So thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in my next video. This, my friend, is an authentic piece of Dairy Queen chicken, okay? And this is an animal. Now, I'm going to give him this. I'm going to set it down. Now watch him. You can eat it. Go ahead. Eat, eat. We're going to leave him for a minute. We're going to walk around. We're going to turn back around and we're going to go back and look, he's still not eating it. Now look, we'll do this. We'll double the steaks. If the dog won't eat it, neither should you. I saw a video from the United States. Someone leave store bought bread out for literally a month and it won't go moldy anymore. I don't know if that's true. Let me know how you feel about this. Farm Fresh vending machine. The founder spent a lot of time in the office and wanted to eat healthy, but the vending machines only had unhealthy options. He started collaboration with farmers to secure natural food stock in his machines. It turned out that his solution was in high demand for other people as well. Now he has over thousands of vending machines and his business is thriving and rapidly expanding. I have new business ideas every day. Subscribe! How do they uh, restock quickly to keep... got married my wife told me one night she said Sean I'm going to bed early I left some food on the stove can you put it away before you go to bed I said sure there are four pots on the stove I go to the refrigerator I make room and I put each pot neatly into the refrigerator I put the food away she comes down the next day goes to the refrigerator sees that I put the four pots in the refrigerator and says why did you put the pots in the refrigerator because before you went to bed you communicated put the food away I did what you said when she told me to put the food away what does she mean put the food in tupperware wrap the food up in saran wrap put the food in aluminum foil wash the dishes be sure to empty the dishwasher she said none of that the point i'm trying to make is just because you're talking doesn't mean that your partner is understanding. You gotta be sure that you are being assertive. What do you feel? What do you need? What do you want? What do you desire? Your wife cannot read your mind. So you have to be assertive and break down for her. Here it is. Maybe uh, because it, we're in the different cultures, but men here don't do this kind of stuff. But let me know how you feel about this. Say hi. Oh, you say hi. That's it. I just oh, want to say hi. Yes, How you doing? Good. I was on the set of Boston Legal with you. I remember working with you. Uh -huh. Great time. Oh, good. I mean, I don't know how the hell you do it. You're 
you look young. Yeah. I mean, you got the hair and everything. Yeah. yeah. Is it the baby's blood? Oh, I mean, I need man. the secret. You know you what drink, I'm saying? Drinking blood. It's crazy. You it's crazy. Blood. That's what I'm saying. Pre preferably the person's alive. Okay. Hey, suck on the blood like I'm a man. Keeps you young, right? Keeps you young. Like, this guy's pushing 100. He looks younger than these assholes I, I, out I, here. I, I love this guy. I got to move you. on. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It's been Thank a pleasure. You. Right. It's been a you. pleasure. Right. John Bravo, by the way, screenwriter and producer and director. Right. Hollywood. I don't think that's funny at all. When the big bear refuses to sign, watch this one, guys. Check the guy next to him. Check the body language. Check the face. Nervous. It's like, hurry up, sign. But the man read it first. Check this one out. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Yeah, check the face now. Look, look, look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys want to trick me, yeah? No, you're not having my signature. Check that. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Watch his face now, the other one. Watch his face. Disappointment. Big time, big time, watch him now, biting his fingernails. Uh oh. <laughs> Are you blinking now? You cannot trick Putin. He is known to be one of the most intelligent leaders of the modern day. But I wonder what was the document he refused to sign? He decided to try the cayenne pepper. And his story goes on. He's alive 18 years after his surgery. And the reason why he's alive is because after a $40,000 angiogram and all, all the bypass and all that, it had failed. He left that morning and he went and bought a 69 cent little bottle of red cayenne pepper from a supermarket. He said he went home. He stirred it up in water, and he started to sip it. It was snowing where he was. Barbara O'Neill does a whole video on this. Check it out. Very informative. Bangladesh is a country that sees little to no foreign tourism, and you really feel that when you go there, because you'll just stop to get a juice or something, and 30 seconds later, there's literally 30 people surrounding you, just watching you. Buy your juice, drink your juice. Look, it's been like 30 seconds. Look at this crowd of people <laughs> that formed around me. And I don't know what to say to these people, like, hey, like, this is a good juice. Like, it's kind of awkward, but it's also interesting at the same time. I've never time. seen a yeah. white people yeah, before, bro. man. Yeah, China. China? I think that is. I look like I'm from China? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't think I looked Chinese. Hi. Saludos. Cheers, guys. No, no cheers. Okay, I offended them. Sorry, guys. I'm just gonna sip my tea. It's like ginger black tea. Your country gets so little foreign tourism that a tourist just buying juice is fascinating to you. It's dope because they want to represent their country in a good light for the few tourists who actually decide to visit. So every single Bangladeshi person I met was so kind and helpful. And honestly, they're some of the best people that you'll ever meet. Tourist, pizza. All you ask me about is the pizza. I can't guide you to the best ones. But avoid these dollar wow. pizzas. All the halal guys bought the pizza shops in Midtown and give you that trash pizza. And all the cricket people be eating that pizza. There's no Italians making pizza no more. They own the spots, but the Mexicans make all the pizza. So behind the counter is going to look like this. First of all, New York pizza is only good because of the water we use from upstate. You mix that with the dough and you got yourself some New York pizza. My favorite is Patsy's and he's Harlem. We're not coming up here. But look how great that crust is on that pizza. And that's because they use cold to bake their pieces, which now is illegal. Joe's Pizza on the west side downtown is legendary. They're rating this the best pizza in the world. It's in the Lower East Side. It's a restaurant. But the TikTok food critics destroyed the Lower East Side. Because now everyone waits in line to eat with these TikTok famous restaurants. And the locals can't enjoy it no more. Rocky cliffs of an ocean side, a very peculiar video was taken. The video itself starts off by showing a scenic view of the ocean. 
But apparently, it wouldn't just be the ocean that astounds the person recording, but rather, something else. They hadn't noticed what was captured until much later, and they were left even more spooked after learning that this place has had many people pass away, specifically what? from jumping off. Nicole, the person who took this, explains what she captured. Take a look. Rewatching this video I took of the ocean and I just now realized I captured a voice. Clearly, it's not my voice. No way. A voice clear as day is heard on camera. No one else had been around, which rules out the possibility of this being said by someone close. Even weirder is that the voice sounds staticky, giving it a robotic quality. From Australian to that of a pirate's voice, viewers believe that this may have been the spirit of someone who unfortunately passed away on this spot. Just like Nicole, they too might have been enjoying the view. But whether ghost or not, the voice alone is quite strange and continues to baffle Nicole to this day. Let me know how you feel about this. The average person who goes to school has no idea why humanity exists. He has no idea concerning a spiritual factor in material existence. He has no general comprehension of the rules of life as these differ from the rules of social and political structure. He does not know where he came from, he does not know why he is here, and he has no idea where he's going. And on this compound ignorance, we offer degrees and make brilliant scholars of the people who have never answered any of those questions. It is one of these amazing things that we have created a great hierarchy of well-lettered ignorance. We have made everything subservient, not to wisdom, but to the passing advantages of the hour. We're in exactly the they just want us to consume, not think, create, be free, and know our history. Flutal French Bulldog, with its enchanting poodle-like hair texture and rare pink coloration, represents the pinnacle of achievement for Frenchie breeders. Designer Bulls is at the forefront of this revolution, achieving this world's first. The pink Fludel combines the beloved features of the French Bulldog, its charming personality what? and compact size, with the elegant, curly, and longer coat of a poodle. This coat, with its soft curls and hypoallergenic qualities, not only enhances the Frenchie's appearance, but also caters to those who prefer a more allergen-friendly pet. What? As breeders continue to refine and perfect this look, the pink Fludel French Bulldog is set to become the ultimate statement in luxury and creativity in the Frenchie world. This breed variation not only showcases the innovation and dedication of breeders, but also marks a new era in the development of French Bulldogs, blending aesthetic beauty with the breed's lovable traits in a truly remarkable... They're cute, but they don't look healthy to me. They don't want you to know that there are two powerful plants you can use that can help you grow your hair naturally. It stimulates hair growth. The first one is comfrey leaf. Comfrey leaf is a wound healer. It's a cell regenerator. This means that whatever you put it on, it's going to help regenerate healthy tissue cells. So comfrey leaves, you apply on your scalp as a hair oil or as a shampoo. It's, it stimulates hair growth. It stops dandruff. It stops damage of the scalp. It repairs wounds. Second one is Eclipta alba. This is called the king of hairs for a simple reason that in ancient India has been used for centuries to help grow hair, calling it the king of hairs. It stimulates hair growth. It prolongs the hair growth phase of the hair cycle, stops hair loss, and also stops premature grain. It's fantastic overall herb to use. You want to infuse that into your shampoo or use as a hair oil. Use it two, three times a week and watch how your hair improves. I am Mamel. Hi guys, we are Emily. How are y'all doing? We are also the Ooh. beast. Bah! Bah! We are also Jack. How's our TikTok fans doing? How are our haters doing? If you guys are not a fan yet of Emily, Amel, the beast, and Jack, definitely come check us out in live tonight. The reason the pagans worshipped gods is because demons would masquerade around as gods. Yeah. And they would worship demons and Satan. And we're just seeing it. Um, 
revisited right now. And I mean, making even psychics mainstream and people are playing with it like it's make-believe. We live in a battle against demonic forces, powers, and authorities that are in the world around Mark us. Mark 5, the 9. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion. And he replied, for we are men. Founder of Nike got the idea in Japan. He got the shoes in Japan. The founder of Red Bull got the idea in Asia. He wasn't from Asia. The founder of Starbucks got the idea from Italy. More good ideas come from other countries. Travel. You could probably travel too much where you lose money, but get out, man. Go to Canada. Go to London. Go to Europe. Go to Dubai. Go to South Africa. Go to Brazil. Just go on a trip. I've done short trips and they're fine. I've gone for three days. I recommend generally going seven to ten days, but if you can only do... I've been saying this. If you cannot travel around the world, at least travel the country. Life changing. I'm going to start a travel channel uh, starting from my country and then overseas. I also heard the theory that the Apostle John that wrote Revelation, mm -hmm. that he's never died. And it's because... Died of old age. No, it doesn't say that. Because when the Apostles came to Christ and they're asking like how they're going to die or something like that, he says, you'll be crucified, you'll be killed in my name. But then they're like, well, what about John? But like, he was tortured. There was a story like proven that one of the ways that they tried to kill him was lowering him in a bat of like Ooh. boiling oil and stuff. I heard that, yeah. And he survived and then he was sent to the island of Patmos. And that's where he wrote Revelation, but never mentioned that he died but that, i mean that'd be pretty dope if he was like taken no. up like how elijah and enoch it was the uh, one whom jesus loved yeah that's true made that very clear do you think james's brother is just like okay he's literally my brother we he died it. in ephesus after leaving patmos don't go anywhere because we still have fire clips after fire clips back to back uh, diddy was bad well he is but you want to meet someone who's arguably worse Vince McMahon. See, Vince McMahon had a problem. He's currently under federal investigation for misconduct with many women. For those of you that don't know, Vince McMahon is the former owner of the WWE wrestling stuff. Anyway, you want to hear something wild? Wrestling fans have always known he was an evil psychopath. Why? Because listen closely. He played a character in his own wrestling show so twisted and insane, it became harder and harder for people to think he's acting. For instance, the storyline that involved his daughter. Whatever you think I'm about to say, it's worse. His daughter's a character on on the show as well she plays his daughter in fact his whole family plays themselves they go through many inappropriate things like at one point her daughter and her son start mm -mm, palming her mom in front of millions of people but i think the son just held the mom so she couldn't run away and anyway here's where things start to get wicked in a wrestling promo video his daughter says i've only said no to my father for two things and one of them was he could not be the father of my child in what? the show focus we not finish look at the time she was married to a wrestler named triple h in real life they were having a kid after they told her dad vince mcmahon no we're not participating in that story vince mcmahon then asked what if it's your brother her brother and her husband said no vince well actually her brother said yeah i get it my sister's hot but i had to turn her down he actually said this but he might have said this because remember i told you this is for a wrestling promo meaning vince mcmahon put this on air he put this on television he wasn't hiding this so imagine all the worst things he's done in fact you don't have to imagine it look in my comments and the wrestling fans will let you know anyway now that you understand who he is as a person the allegations are probably not that surprising anymore right but let's get wicked part two the allegations go on for decades in fact it's alleged that he's given 20 million dollars total to women over the years from allegedly forcing people cover-ups lip boxing his female wrestlers backstage if they said no he would fire them to the case that brought this to everyone's attention in the first place the traffic making someone do things with him and then all of his friends it's the same thing diddy's getting in trouble for it's like the only thing a billionaire will actually get hunted down for because the feds don't play that there's certain lines that can't be crossed imagine if you found out anyone in america owned a slave you lose your mind. Well, making someone do this like you own them is considered to be a form of slavery. The case alleges that he gives this woman a job. He tells her, if you don't with me, you finna lose that job. Eventually she does thinking it's gonna be a one-time thing. But then she notices that her position is a fake position. He just makes it up to keep her in the office whenever he wants to. Now, for those of you saying, oh, she could have just left. Wisdom is chasing you, but you are faster. And I'm not gonna sit here and explain the human mind to you. Anyway, at this point he says, hey, you gotta start 
with all my other friends. She says, no. And well, you know he didn't take that for an answer. She eventually does it. He gives her $3 million to stay quiet. But so many other women come out at the same time and he has to give all of them so much money that his payments start to slow down. So the girls are like, we're snitching. The FBI comes out and says, wait, don't snitch yet. And that's how you know he is screwed. The FBI basically said, if you take his money, then you can't talk to us. And if you talk to us, he finito, word to Chief Keefe. The women said, fine. And the FBI said, <laughs> Vince said, why y'all laughing? They said, Vince, give us your phone. He said, no, I'm an American citizen. Y'all get, they said, we can do whatever we want. Because here's how things work. Same thing that happened to Diddy. The FBI watches you for years until they know you're so guilty that you will never escape. But when the evidence against you is so bad, they can get these things called subpoenas, meaning they can raid your house, take your phone, require you to give them documents. So Vince is forced to give them his phone and some of the alleged texts got leaked and oh, that boy going to jail. But the case is still technically ongoing and it probably will be for a while. But let's just say I don't think he's- You know, the whole Stephanie and Triple H thing was janky too. Something just doesn't sit right about it. If you come into London, be careful because you have to be very wary now and I'm going to give you some tips on what to look out for. The first one is charities or sponsors. People will come up to you and say, oh, can you sponsor our charity or can you give some donations? Just don't do it. I recently saw a video about this woman that got scammed by one of them. She said she didn't have any money, she's only got cards. So they whipped out one of those card machines and went, oh yeah, just give five pounds. Once she got her phone out, they quickly swiped the phone and then they took 200 pounds yeah. and ran off. Another one is when they say they give you a wristband, you give the donations and then they'll be like, oh, we're low on wristbands, we can't really give you one now. Another one is pickpockets and phone thieves. If you have your phone out like I do now, they will literally come on their bikes and snatch it out of your hands. They're always dressed in black and have the electric bikes, yeah. so look out for them. And one way to keep your phone still on you if you want to hold it and use it, get yourself a phone case with this on it. So you can put your finger through it and if someone tries to snatch it, they can't. And the last one I want to talk about is the cup and ball scam. This happens on the bridge where the Big Ben is. But if you fall for this scam, you're a complete idiot that deserves to be scammed because everyone knows this is a scam and you see the people winning it they're part of the scam they all know each other so anyway they're That's my crazy, little tips man. good luck if you're visiting london i think uh phone wrist straps are also useful to prevent uh from someone taking your phone what do you think submarines are completely you cannot find them in the, in the sea they are stealth beyond stealth i interviewed the a command, former commander of the nuclear subforces, a guy called Admiral Connor. Never given an interview like this before. And I said, like, how hard is it to find a nuclear armed sub? And he said, Annie, it's easier to find a grapefruit sized object in space than a nuclear sub under the sea. Jesus. And these things are, by the way, I have a map in the back of the book that shows you how close adversaries enemies call them what you will china and russia how close they come to the east coast and the west coast of the united states regularly which means it reduces that launch time i told you about of 26 minutes 40 seconds that reduces it down to sort of 10 minutes or less you know america and french uh, subs did war games against each other and the only reason they found each other is because they ran into each other by accident while looking for each other. Actual miracles that no one talks about. Some of these icons that you see above, like the one of Mary, produce natural healing oil. Watch this. There's nothing attached to it. They're squeezing all the healing oil out. We see this in Orthodox churches in Armenia, in Greece, in Egypt. Wow. Just beautiful. And look, they show the back too. The miracle of the holy fire. You see here, the fire doesn't burn the hand, the face, or the hair. This miracle can be witnessed in Jerusalem every single year. Every single year in Jerusalem, people gather together to witness this. When Jesus is claimed to be risen, the candles light up and for 33 minutes, they don't burn anyone. 
Now this miracle is wild. This is Saint Yakovos. This picture of him was taken after his passing. A Cypriot deacon who knew this saint wasn't able to visit him when he passed away. After his passing later, the deacon went to visit the saint's cell. The man took an image of the saint's place and this is what was created after the image was produced. Okay. Make $5,000 a month with this side hustle. These compression sofas are easy and cheap to ship from China due to their compact packaging. They offer a unique and stylish addition to any home, crafted with high quality materials for both comfort and aesthetics. How can you make this happen? You can source these sofas from manufacturers like AliExpress or Alibaba. Look for suppliers who offer custom design to create a unique product line that stands out in the market. How do you sell these sofas? Besides social media marketing, consider creating a dedicated website with e-commerce store. Utilizing SEO strategies to drive organic traffic to your site, you can also list your sofas on online marketplaces wow. like Amazon, Etsy, and Wayfair. Attend home and furniture expos to showcase your product directly to potential customers. Collaborate with local interior designers to recommend your sofas to their clients. Follow us to discover more winning business ideas and start your own journey to success. I think it's really cool. And we have the mattresses one. And it's, it's pretty good mattress too. And what do the yellow hats do? The yellow hats are a mystical order, and they are indeed very strong. Their name dates back to the times of El, because their attribute was exactly yellow hats. It was something like an intelligence service. They penetrated everywhere they needed to, controlled finances, business, and so on. But there is also a big hat, a hat for fools. It's a huge trend in Buddhism, within which they organized their cult. You know them as the yellow hat wearers. This Buddhist trend as such is harmless, and not all of them are members of this secret cult. But inside this organization, there are initiates in the real order of the yellow hats. Like I said before, they maintain the library of the past. They were also those who gave Hitler video cameras and other technologies for just a few small wagons of gold. While the Green Dragon were those who guarded Hitler. Just look how such people were hanging around Gurdjieff's disciple, almost openly and without any scruple. And there are a whole lot of examples of their activities in history. You know, Curious George and the man with the big yellow hat, Think about that one. They always put it in our face. Agrigor is a Greek word meaning watcher, a thought form created by will and visualization. A group agrigor is the distinctive energy of a specific group of magicians who are working together, creating and building the same thought form or energy form. An agrigor is basically an angel, sometimes called watcher. In Hebrew, the word is ur, er, and the concept appears in the Book of Enoch. To simplify the agrigor, it is essentially a spirit or a host of spirits influencing the thoughts of a certain group of people, disguising themselves as the personal thoughts of each group member. The atmosphere created by an agrigor can be so common, we may be inclined to ignore it. Everyone has walked into a room full of people and immediately been hit with a sense of something. Dread, fear, joy, confusion. It can also be very subtle. So subtle you're not aware of its influence until you are away from the group supporting the agrigor. The test of a wise person of strong character is to be aware of the presence of the agrigor, to keep separate from it, and to not allow its influence on your mind. These spirits are very subtle and are master manipulators and can even work through your friends and or family to try and influence you to stray away from the truth. They are brilliant psychologists, understanding the workings of the human mind better than most people. As the book of John says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Every group, congregation, denomination, society, cult, or party has an aggregor. It is important to have awareness that affiliation makes one subject to the aggregor of that group. This place is a phone farm in Vietnam. Why they have so many phones? What do they even do with them? 
They call it a box phone because they stash a bunch of phones in a box. But these aren't your everyday phones. To cut That's costs crazy. and keep things cool, they strip out the batteries and screens. They use these phones to boost likes or fake followers on social media. Wow. They also log into games to farm items and sell game accounts. Look at the employees working hard, and behind them, it's just phones everywhere. And it doesn't stop there. They can pack up these box phones and sell them overseas. I'm fully convinced. Wow. We're stealing all of our tech from ancient temples. I know what you're thinking. That's just one example. No, it's not. That's a different temple, different ceiling. Okay, turbines are really complex. They got a lot of moving parts. Yeah, and they put those in there too. They're on the pillars. Speaking of pillars, you ever seen these? These are ionic pillars. Ionic pillars. I'm on to, I caught you. I'm on to you. I got you. Okay, okay. Parabolic antenna. It's a fancy word for satellite TV dish. Egypt. Egypt. Yeah, y'all have been to Karnak, I know. But have you been to the Osirian? Because from the top down, it looks a whole lot like a really basic computer processor. Probably just took a quick drive over to Promenon and upgraded the hardware, huh? Where are you going to plug that in? Ancient city in China? Right there, maybe? Feeling a little bit more Middle Eastern? Maybe Persepolis? High frequency oscillator. You mean anchor what? Yeah, cat's out of the bag, buddy. Micro resonator. You mean Tamil Temple? Ah, I didn't forget about the circuit diagram. Yeah, you didn't reverse engineer an acoustic masterpiece. Plasma confinement. Well, that's a quick little upgrade if you just go to Dendera. Then you got a cathode ray tube. Old tube TV. Wow. Quantum computer. I need to see the sky miles, especially from the guys at CERN. CERN. I don't think you're yep. just so smart, huh? I'm on to you. This is one of the biggest brands on the planet. And today I'm going to steal all of their tricks to make a kick-ass brand of my own. I need to come up with a product, a name, a logo, packaging, and some ads all in the next minute or so. Let's go. First, I need a product. I need to find something everybody already buys so their industries become a bit complacent. Liquid Death chose water. I'm choosing toilet roll. Next, I need to show <laughs> that we care. Look at all this plastic packaging we use in toilet roll. So let's scrap that, use this paper bag, and make our rolls out of sustainable bamboo. Now for our name. I've teamed up with the TikTok marketing legend for this video, Yasin from Viral Video Club. And after several back and forths with very questionable name ideas, we landed on this. Holy shit. Now it's logo time. Okay, I'm starting off cool with a little name. toilet roll. And I really want to turn it into the Grim Reaper. Give him his scythe and toilet roll for a face. There he is. Now I need a fitting font and I plop our little dude in the O. Sorted. Time to sort out how we're going to talk to people. I'm leaving this bit for the expert. All right, sweet. We've got our name and now we need a killer tagline. And and holy she is giving it's holy giving she. heaven and hell vibes so i'm gonna go with heavenly soft and wickedly superior i also think we can have a lot of fun with liquid death's rock and roll theme so we'll use that so we've got rock and roll and toilet roll so let's try and combine those so i've come up with rock in hell and roll in heaven now all that's left for the packaging is a simple what? description of the product Bamboo sheets works well here. Sticking to our rock and roll, heaven and hell themes and mixing in a little exclusivity, we get your backstage pass to a heavenly arts. Now, sometimes subtlety is good. Other times you kind of just want to hit it on the nose. And so that's what we're going to do with this ad. You've got the rock, we've got the rock. Then I started thinking about bog standard, which is a super interesting phrase because you've got bog standard, which means ordinary. You've got bog, which means toilet. And you've standard, which can mean quality. Eventually, I came up with the new bog standard. Now now let's sort the packaging. First I'm going to turn our paper bag purple, get our logo in place, let everyone know we're using bamboo sheets. We are selling toilet roll here so let's pop a couple of those in. Really want to add some fluffy clouds going along the bottom of this so I'm making mine out of bums. Rock in hell, roll in heaven, heavenly soft, wickedly superior. Packaging sorted and finally chapter 7, advertise your backstage pass to a heavenly ass. There's our first one. What? We've got the rock. We've got the roll. And lastly, the new bog standard. There we have it. A brand new product born straight from the playbook of a $700 million water company. The only question left is, would you wipe yourself with our holy sheets? I think it would sell. But if I wanted to make a drink a company, I would call it Liquid Life. She has done it again. Hallelujah. The Virgin Mary once again appears to hundreds of people in a Coptic Orthodox Church. So for those of you who don't know, us Coptic Orthodox, we fast from August 7th to August 22nd every single year. These two weeks are dedicated to the Virgin Mary. It's the Virgin Mary fast. 
Last year, the Virgin Mary appeared to a paralyzed man who she healed in the church. The man was paralyzed for seven years. Soon as he saw the Virgin Mary, he couldn't believe his eyes. The man was like, that's the mother of God, that's the mother of God. And the Virgin Mary told him to stand up from his wheelchair and walk. And when I came out and said that we don't pray to Mother Mary, we ask her to pray for us. All of you were like, Mother Mary isn't alive. But yes, she is. She's the mother of our Lord Jesus. She's held at the top, right under our Lord. So many miracles that people don't show happen in Egypt, happen in Lebanon, happen in Greece during this time of the year. Again, we don't worship Mother Mary. We love her so much. We dedicate these two weeks to her. And I know what you're saying. Why can't you go straight to God and pray? Of course, that's what we do. But the intercession of saints is biblical. It's in the Bible. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. People in Poland keep getting pelted with tennis balls whenever they walk in front of one particular balcony. But any annoyance that they might feel quickly fades when they look up and realize that the projectiles aren't being launched by a grumpy neighbor, but rather this cute pup who has been roping strangers into playing fetch with her. The dog's name is Booba and her human says that she came up with the game by herself after she accidentally knocked a tennis ball off the ledge. A passerby picked it up and threw it back to her and she was so delighted that she hasn't stopped pushing tennis balls off the balcony ever since. Her little game has actually made her somewhat of a star in the city of Wuch and some have traveled from neighboring cities just to play a little balcony fetch with her. Booba is never oh, rejected like and it. even those who seem to be in a hurry stop to give her a few tosses. So she's not only entertaining herself but also encouraging people to slow down for just a moment and share a little laugh with the people around them. After each play session she retreats back into the comfort of her home until she's feeling rested and recharged enough to drop more of her toys on the strangers who happen to walk by. I'm All Jen right. and I post something positive every day. Are they playing fetch with her or is she making humans fetch? Give you a little test. Look around this room right now and notice everything you can see that's brown. Close your eyes. Tell me everything you just saw that was red. Now, obviously, you saw a lot more brown, didn't you? Yeah. Why? Because you're looking for it. Open yeah. your eyes. Now look for red. For red. Anywhere you can find red. Any place you can find red. Okay. Okay, did you find more red this time? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was looking for red. That's right. Once you develop a belief, you find what supports it. So watch this. I bet you saw some beige shit, called it brown just to feel successful, did you? Right over there. <laughs> I bet you saw some things burgundy and called them bread just so you could feel successful. I factored in some of those uh, <laughs> now and later. You see yeah. what I'm saying? If you think you're, you're screwed up, you're messed up, you're going to find and you're going to color yourself that way. Whether you think it's true, whether you think it's not, it's going to be true for you. In other words, whatever you believe is self-evident. You reinforce what you believe. This guy has made a literal uh, fortune on just speaking common sense. Spectacular salesman. Menu gate, have you heard of that? Menu gate? This man, his name is Cody, lives in Atlanta. He walked out of his apartment one day and noticed every single door in his hallway had a Chinese menu in the doorway. Three days later, still there in every doorway. All of them. And he's like, what in the world? Mm -hmm. It's like three days, everyone in my hall has not opened their door. And then it was like five days, still there. And he's like, this is weird. So he went down to the parking garage and looked at the cars. And the majority of the cars in the parking garage were covered in dust. And he's like, that's weird. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, okay, this is like freaking me out a little bit. Went through his whole apartment building, couldn't find a fire alarm. Finally, like went down like one weird hallway or whatever, found one, pulls it. And supposedly there's supposed to be 800 people living in this apartment building no one came out he went out into his local little okay i have to say this to crystal meth users i've been reading my dms this morning and this needs to be said especially for you infrequent users i've said this over and over crystal meth tina is a different kind of drug that does different things to your brain than any other the first time you puff or inject or whatever you do, snort it, it lights up your brain like fireworks and alters the chemistry of the way you think, behave, perceive, and feel. You may wait two or three, four months between usages, but your thinking, your reasoning has changed forever. And each time you use again, it solidifies and imprints and you are turning slowly into the zombie she wants you to be. Studies show that it takes 12 to 24 months before you 
your brain heals itself enough to function properly and not kill itself trying to get that dopamine fix again. This is why I say you have to be extreme when you want to get sober from this drug. You can't trust what's going on up here. I don't care if you feel like you're functioning normal and you're sober and it's been three, four, five months. You are still under the influence of this drug. It is not alcohol. It is not heroin. You think you have it under control, but you don't. I'm sorry to be so angry, but if you were on the calls and the DMs that I am on every single day and you see the destruction and the death and the way people are dying, you wouldn't fucking play with this. What the fuck? did i just watch this documentary is so unhinged i can't even play the trailer here like i usually do because every second of it can't be shown this is about Gigi allen the most psychotic musician of all time if you love documentaries make sure to hit follow because i post daily and you'll never have to look for something to watch Gigi allen was an underground punk icon in the 80s and he was a maniac performing naked fighting on stage bashing the microphone into his teeth till they fell out, taking a dump on stage, eating it no. and throwing it at the crowd. This eating man it? was seriously unwell. He even became friends with the John Wayne Gacy while he was in prison and he would go visit him and they would talk about tying up little girls. Every second what? of this documentary is appalling. This is made by the guy who ended up making the hangovers and the fact that he was able to film all of this is insane. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. <laughs> Ready to join the man, then, yeah? I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, okay, my I'm guy. Mm -hmm. As you can see, oh, this my son is trying to join a gang. <laughs> but as his father, I cannot allow this one. Son, please. You need to go. No, Dad. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> my son wants me to eliminate him from this life. But mm -hmm. I'm going to give him one more chance. Son, we're, we're not playing. Let's go. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shut up. <laughs> to, to me. <laughs> Everybody clap for his bravery. <laughs> <laughs> you can have his bravery. <laughs> you are the best man. <laughs> <laughs> My son, the big gangster, has nominated himself to be a sacrificial lamb. Sacrificial <laughs> 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 lamb. Say less. That was funny. Bro! That got better and better. I could <laughs> never tell my dad to shut up. Shut up, a bastard. <laughs> shut up, man. Clap for his bravery, and they clap. The switch up was crazy. Old school parenting kept kids on the right path. All right, folks. Thank you for staying till the end. Be kind to each other. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And don't forget to like or dislike so I can make a better content. There's a free gift below. And if you want to buy me coffee or support me through Patreon, the links are in the description below. Have a prosperous day and God bless.